In this video, we're going to be talking about the test and environment, specifically how to use the environments and how to switch between them properly. If you're not familiar with how the test and environments are set up, I highly recommend reading through the write-up in the test and help file. I'm currently looking at the online version of the help for the 2019. And basically, in the environment, there is three major directories we're interested in. These are the common app data directory, the local app data directory, and the public directory. If you're going through the documentation and you see links like this to re reference a, a file, this is what they're talking about, is that there's a directory on the machine, and this is where it's contained in. There's actually two versions of it. There's the default boilerplate version that installs with test and, and then there is a version that's configurable, which what is what we are going to be using. What TestSun does is it searches through the configurable user-defined version of these directories first for specific files. And then if it can't find it, it will go back to the default test and directories and search through its version. I recommend that you always uh, redirect these directories to someplace useful and so that you can encapsulate your framework in a specific uh, folder area. And then you have the option of switching between your frameworks or versions of your frameworks, depending on what you need. This is really useful, especially as if you have an ATE design where you have a superset for your development system, and then you have a uh, subset deployed for cost reasons. So you might have two or three different versions of the same system with slightly different configuration options. It's also useful if you have to, to support different versions of your framework. So it, you may have, you know, version one deployed and everyone's happy with it, but a new product comes along and you have to make some changes and then you want to deploy version two, but you don't want to do regression testing on version one. And so what you can do is then you would have a version one environment with all your framework files in it, and then a version two environment framework file with all its versions on it. And then on the systems that run version one, you've got them deployed with the version one files already. For version two, you deploy the version two files but then when you need to do support and development on your development machine, you then launch it with the environment for the specific version of the framework. So let's jump, jump in and show how to set that up. The environment file is just a text file. It's an INI file, if you're, if you're familiar with that. It's got four entries on it, your folders and the environments directories that it should go with. Okay, so let's open up TestDown. If you look in the test and UI, down at the bottom, you'll see environment, and it says global. If it says global, it means it's using the default directories. And let's change that. Go to configure, click on environment. And then I've already set up one of these files, so I'm going to load it. And then as you can see, you can set any of them or all of them. I suggest you always do all of them. It makes it cleaner. And then you click the set environment option. When you do this, it'll give you this nasty gram saying that it's going to end all executions, it's going to close everything, exit out, and relaunch. And we're going to press OK. And now that we've relaunched in our environment, you can see down at the bottom it says environment and it tells me what the environment file is. If we go into the directory where that environment fa file has been set up, if you click on them, the first time you, you run it, you'll notice that it's, it's generated a, a series of folders. It's copied in a bunch of the default stuff out of the boilerplate configuration. So things like, let's get out of public for a minute. Under common app data, this is where you've got your, your config folder that contains your, your analyzer rules, templates, your search directories, all those those settings are in there. And it, it provides a default set of those. So once you're in the environment, if you go and start messing around with those options, it will change the options in this environment file. Now, one of the problems with accessing it this way is that it's not a persistent change. So if I exit out of test and, and then go back in, It will have cleared the settings for the environment. And as you can see, based on the speed of your development machine, this can be a, a huge time waste every time you have to do this. Set environment. 
yeah, we're still in global. And then it will reset. And then we're back in. The other issue I have with it is that if you can configure it that way and you open up that environment file, Testa and likes to store absolute paths. So as you can see that you have an absolute path to each of these directories. You could modify these by hand to make them relative paths, but then that gets a little bit tricky and, and we'll go over why. So what I usually do instead is I make a shortcut to a batch file. The, one of the things that I found a while ago is, is Testan has the option to, to as a command line option, you can launch it with the path to an environment file. Okay, and let's, let's take a look at this one. So this is a different environment I've set up as a demo. And you'll notice a few things. I haven't created any directories for it, and I just got the two files, the environment file and the ATE file. If you look at the environment file, I just specify three directories that are relative to the batch file. And then on here, I've got sort of a, a boilerplate generic batch file. There's really only three commands you care about. First is the environment directory. This little squiggly piece of batch script basically says, return whatever directory this bat file is. So we'll run from anywhere. And then I'm setting the test on directory. You will need to modify this for your version of test and for test on 2020. This is, this is where the sequence edit.exe is. This is the, the, the test and sequence editor executable. And then what this command does is, is that it basically starts test and and then it passes in the environment flag and then it builds the environment directory so we got the directory from what the, from where the batch file lives so the environment file needs to be next to the batch file and then run that so three lines of code you click the batch file test and should come up And we're using environment.tsnv. And we can confirm that by going to the environment. And there we are. OK. One thing about I really like about this approach, too, is you only need the two files, and then you could copy these two files into another directory and launch, rename it, launch it, and it would go and, and generate all the directories for you, and they're all relative path directories. So I can take this folder right now if I wanted to fork it. We'll call this environment three. We'll call this environment three. Press launch. And eventually it just goes. Yep. There we go. And so what you'll see on my test stations is on my desktop, I'll just create a shortcut. environment one, environment three. And then depending on what I'm working on, I do the one click. I don't have to go navigate dialogues and relaunch test in. I just press go and I'm, and there, I'm, there I am. And that's how to use and switch environments easily.